back to this episode of Just Another Year Chicago. My name is Nick Brody. I'm joined alongside my good friend and co-host, Tony Spita. And today we are hitting on the Bears were not big traders at the deadline. In fact, they didn't do anything at the deadline. The deadline just ended as we're recording this episode. And we're going to discuss how the Bears can still turn this thing around with the pieces that they got. Yeah, so like you said, the Bears, yeah, didn't do much at the deadline, indicating that probably Ryan Pace and Matt Nagy are just trying to save their jobs, just kind of <laughs> salvage what they can of already – seemingly potentially a lost season. Uh, but before we begin, uh, just a quick uh, thoughts and prayers to uh, the victim and uh, the Henry Ruggs car accident this morning. I know um, they're still investigating stuff. Henry, Henry Ruggs was allegedly um, driving under the influence out of Las Vegas. Uh, obviously everyone, please be safe. Please always, you know, make the right decision, Uber, get a ride, whatever. Um, so that was kind of a sad, Sad story that's been going around, going around, just wanted to kind of, kind of offer our condolences there. So with that, uh, let's jump into kind of our first topic. Uh, there's three players or coaches who need to step up if the bears are going to win, not even win out, just win like four more games. I, I think at least that's how I looked at it. Um, so kind of, I'll, I'll start here. Uh, so Eddie Jackson, or honestly, whoever takes a spot, depending on how long he's injured or, or what kind of happened throughout the season. So, Deion Bush, whoever it may be. Uh, the 49ers made our defensive backs look like a big 12 pass defense. It was disgusting. Uh, they gave up yards on every level of passing. So from long throws to literally the wide receiver screen that I just watched the replay of again, and it infuriated me. Happened right in front of me. I was at the game, unfortunately. Uh, the quick slants over the middle were, are, were also killers. I mean, I don't know what they got. Maybe they have to be more aggressive. I don't know. It just looked bad from head to toe. Um, so that, that was my first one. Juan Castillo is my second one. Uh, I know he's kind of in a, obviously the offensive line coach, if you don't know that uh, for the bears, I know he's in a bad spot dealing with kind of the scraps that Ryan Pace has gave him, but Larry Borm's back and he looks delightful. He was awesome by the way. He was awesome. I, he was great in person and he, uh, the stats look great too. So <laughs> he passed the eye test and the stat test. Uh, and allegedly Tevin Jenkins is close to a potential return according to uh, Jason Peters. So <laughs> the bears plan on salvaging this season. They need strong O line play down the stretch, and Juan Castillo is the guy that uh, obviously is the head of that snake. Nick, and you got any comments? Yeah, and here's one thing that I want to say about Tevin Jenkins. I'm excited for him. Like, I think that he could be a really big part to this team moving forward. There's no doubt about that. But we don't know what type of player he's going to be. We don't know how many reps he's going to get out of the gate. He is not the answer technically. Like, he was a very he's an incredible prospect, but he had back issues. And who knows how long it's going to be till he is a full participant in games. So still expect to see Jason Peters and Tevin Jenkins switching out. And also Tevin Jenkins won't be in his original spot. You know, you know, muscle memory is a big thing for these linemen. So I think that Juan uh, Castillo needs to for sure put that into consideration. Be like, Hey, listen, I need to put the guys in the best position. I need to put guys in the best position for reps too. Overall, you have to play the guys to their best ability and what they've been doing for years of their career. So he has a huge weight on his shoulders right now because this team is talented. And I, I will argue that to the day I die is that this team is talented right now, but the offensive line is the biggest in the weakest point of this team. And Juan's supposed to get, be a very, very good offensive line coach and be able to do whatever he wants to work with. He's definitely got to pick up his game for sure. Yeah, I completely agree. Do you think, uh, do you think Tevin Jenkins should come back this year or should he no. just, okay. I agree with you. I, th I think actually. he should sit. I think he should sit, like, let him heal up. Like, do not rush this because we're already three and five. If we lose this weekend, we go to three and six and we're practically out of the playoffs at that point. So unless the bears somehow magically win, you know, their next nine of 10 games or whatever is left over over like, no, I just let him sit, let him heal up and be a premier lineman next year. I completely agree. Yeah. It's not, it's not a finger injury. It's a back injury. It's literally like the most important one of the, uh, you can say your brain and whatever, but like the most important uh, second, thing that you do second. not want yeah yeah of course yeah probably second top two um and my so my third and final one will be uh who needs to step up which is whoever's calling plays hopefully it's bill laser but who knows if Matt Nagy's gonna take back over whatever the situation may be uh we saw it when Justin Fields rolled out to his left again this is eye test and stats because I was there I was watching it and it was awesome uh but he was four for four for 81 yards and a touchdown uh to a tight end which has been this guy's keys uh, keys to the game every single week uh, on his four uh, rollouts, which he dropped back, I believe it was 41, 42 times. He rolled out four times and was awesome those four times. Clearly, that's something that he's comfortable with. 
Um, so there's obviously so much more we could say about it. Just let, let Justin do what he's comfortable with, which is creating plays with his legs and throwing to Jesse James. The fact that it took eight weeks to finally include Jesse James in this offense after nearly every report out of training camp was some form of, you know, big play involving Justin Fields and Jesse, Jesse James should be the considered chemistry was gross there. negligence. The chemistry was there. He's yeah. a second string. He worked with the second string team, obviously, because Andy Dalton was a starter throughout camp in the preseason. So like him and Jesse James have chemistry there. That's why him and Darnell Mooney also have a lot of chemistry because guess who's number one, Al Robinson. And then Alan Robinson in his press conference is saying like, I'm just starting to learn who Justin Fields is as a quarterback. Duh. Like, come on. It, yeah. I totally agree with you. I, you know, I think Bill Lazor is the better play caller, but I'm not saying Bill Lazor is the answer. I was uh, hoping for Bill Lazor to have like three, like a uh, Justin Fields having close to 300 yards passing three touchdowns. Like I was hoping for it. And that just didn't happen. But again, the offensive line is a huge issue. At least the tackles are a huge issue. Not Larry Borum, Jason Peters. Well, I, like, I don't even know. I think it's Sam Mustafer that's the biggest problem now on the offensive line. Like, Cody Whitehair and James Daniels are doing a fine job, especially on the runs up the middle. But, man, Jason Peters obviously can't go against, like, certain guys. And, again, shout out Larry Borum uh, for, you know, whole, like making Nick Bosa technically have only one sack on him, but really it was Alex Bars who was in as a tight end. So just want to clarify that. Cause I sent out a tweet and a lot of people were like, uh, it was Alex Bars fault. Like, yes, it was, but it was Borum side. So just want to clarify that real fast, but yes, mm-hmm. totally agree. Whoever's calling the plays worked for the best abilities of Justin Fields. So you were going to say something, Tony. I was just going to say, yeah, my final comment on the tight ends is Use Jesse James more because that's what works. It's not like Cole Komet's out here catching a ton of passes. Jimmy Graham's not out here catching no. a ton of passes. Like it's it's again, if it was if there was a hierarchy, sure, but it's just you just haven't been using. Okay, that was all. I just I'm so mad and happy that they finally used them, but I'm mad that they haven't been. You know, Ugh. totally agree, totally agree with that. So my three people of the game: number one, Shaw Desai. The defense has been more talent is more talented than most defenses in the league. There's no doubt about that. You look at it on paper and ha- not having Jesse, uh, Eddie Jackson against the 49ers, actually a lot of bears fans realize that hurt us. So like people do game plan around him because you never know when he's going to pop off. I'll just got to say that out of the gate, but this is Sean Desai's defense. He's the one calling the plays. He knows his personnel better than anybody. And from weeks two to six, the defense looked great. They're keeping us in games. They were winning games for us. They weren't getting takeaways though, but they were leading the leading sacks They're one of the best rush teams in the league. And they were on the rise in regards to passing, which they still are a pretty strong passing team before. I mean, in retrospect, but you also, you didn't have Khalil Mack out there creating pressure on Jimmy Garoppolo, you know, j- a lot of bad plays overall, but now it's starting to look like a ch- coach Chuck Pagano defense. And what I mean by that is there is way too much zone and there's not, I mean, so in return, not enough man coverage. There's not enough blitz to get after the quarterback when you were leading the league in sacks at one point and your percentage of blitz was actually one of the lowest in the league. So you can get after the quarterback, no matter what it takes, just keep sending the house. It obviously was working. And, you know, you're not in in regards to zone, you're not letting your defensive backs take risk. That's why there's been really no interceptions. That's why there's really been no big fumbles or anything. You have to let your DBs, especially the ball Hawks that the bears have go after and get it. That's how 2018 works so well. You know, there was some big plays given up against San Francisco that everyone looked like they flat out quit. Like they were blocking and like kind of pushing bears defenders And they were just kind of like pushing back. They weren't like trying to go after the ball. Like that one touchdown pass that went for 50 yards where it was actually really a a loss. And then everyone just kind of gave up on the play. That drove me crazy. That drove me absolutely crazy. Instead of being like, oh, let's just give up a 30 yard gain and then bring them down out of bounds. No, try to get in there and tackle them. If you give up the touchdown, but it looks like you were trying, it's a lot better than, you know, kind of just playing like flag football at that point. And I would rather give up a touchdown on a guy like, you know, uh, Gibson senior or Duke Shelley or someone diving for a pass and almost making a play because that makes me feel like, okay, we're being aggressive. And then the offense is like, okay, they're being aggressive. We can't do anything about that. We have to, we still have to be smart because they are going to get one of those balls eventually. So, uh, I love coach Sean Desai. I think he's great, great guy for the community, but man, last week was super disappointed and he's going to be a huge factor turning around this team. Yeah. I couldn't agree more with you. Uh, I, I agree with you also on the point that I'd rather, I'd rather go out there and yeah, have us die going 110% than just slow, just like paper cuts to death, uh, you know, playing too conservative, keeping everything in front of us, whatever they were converting third and 19s on screen passes. Yeah, no, we, we could go on for days about that. I'm sure. But, uh, yeah, you can, you can get into your number two and we'll move on. 
<laughs> and let me, I'm just going to speed round through the next two. Cause I really want to get to the next topic before we close out. So David Montgomery, the second he is back, he needs to play like the same level as Khalil Herbert. I'm talking 80 plus yards a game, total yards, whether that be rushing, passing, or both combined, the bears will win games. They will do it like they did in 1985 with Walter Payton. We need a big one, two punch. We need that in order to stay in games. If you have a two headed monster of Khalil uh, Herbert and David Montgomery, it's going to be a really, really big deal. So I think that there would be huge for the Chicago bears when David Montgomery comes back and he's going to be a huge influence on this offense. Now going to my next point, um, Allen Robinson as a mentor in leader. I know Allen Robinson's last year's contract and a lot of people say he doesn't really care to be here, but he needs to be a mentor to the wide receiver corp, especially Darnell Mooney, because I'll get into it a little bit, but none of the wide receivers are coming back next year besides Darnell Mooney on paper. He's the only contract wide receiver after 2021, uh, but he also needs to help out Justin Fields. He needs to make Justin Fields have the confidence of having that number one wide receiver. He isn't. He needs to make sure his value stays high as well. If he's going to go elsewhere and want $20 million like wide receiver money, he needs to make sure he's you know, putting up stats. So Allen Robinson, put some effort out there. Help Justin Fields grow. Who knows? The Bears might give you the money that you want because you help turn around the season. So if Allen Robinson can become, I hate to say this, but our Devontae Adams of the Green Bay Packers, maybe maybe get dinner with Justin once a week, go out and play video games, You know, get a drink. I don't know what they do, but I don't care. Grow a relationship with him. You even said it in a press conference that you really don't know Justin that well. Get to know him because, you know, Justin needs to have that confidence and also he'll throw you the ball and you can get money. That's what I got to say. So it's a great point. (laughs) Tony, you said you got one quick comment. Oh, I was saying, uh, yeah, I'll just, uh, I can do uh, mine for the next topic. I'll do mine real quick and let you finish it off because mine is, I think uh, it's very different. I think that that what a lot of people are thinking. Uh, So obviously this next topic is, uh, kind of so the bear so the bears obviously weren't sellers today everyone knows that uh so after the season either will be kind of you know put up or shut up so who would you kind of trade where would you send them to what what would you kind of do uh the reason i'm going to go first is because like i said i have a little different perspective um than i think everyone else does and it's not because i think this is what they should do i just think unfortunately one this will happen and two um this is kind of the position we're in i don't think they should blow up the team uh, we obviously have to address certain positions, offensive line, defensive backs. Uh, but I don't really think that a rebuild is the answer just because, you know, I know certain guys are underperforming, but got, like Von Miller just got traded. He got a second and a third. Like we don't yeah. have a Von Miller type talent on this team. The NBA and the MLB obviously are much, a lot more conducive to rebuilding through selling um, for, you know, but going back to it, Stefan Gilmer went for <laughs> what's going to be a mid round, sixth round pick. So I understand the idea. Obviously, we're going to create cap space through it, too. That is part of it. Sign these free agents. But there's no way, you know, there's no way to guarantee that this dysfunctional franchise is going to, you know, be able to sign these guys. And the guys who want to sign, like, we're talking about all all pro tackles and stuff. Like, these guys are going to get locked up by their competent organizations. Uh, so I think if we blow up this team now, or, well, obviously not now, but in the offseason, uh, we're not going to get, you know, the all pro tackle that we want or, you know, a stud defensive back for what we're willing to give up. And I know you're going to go into that, uh, but you know, I don't know because if we, okay, sorry. My last comment will be, if we do go into this full rebuild, I think it'll be too late for like for Justin Fields' rookie contract. At least I hope he's a 20 year franchise quarterback and that, you know, he'll be good no matter what, but a lot of these teams that you see, they're building these championship caliber teams on quarterbacks with rookie deals. So I think it'll be over and then we'll be sad and uh, we'll just be destined for mediocrity for the short to midterm future. So that's a, just kind of my uh, point of view on it. Yeah, it's a mess. It's, an it's not what I mess. think they should do. I think that's unfortunately what's, I guess, going to happen. Ryan Pace put it all on the line this off season, uh, this season for the bears to succeed. And he knows that this is it. Like it's going to be a disaster. Whoever is the next general manager for the Chicago bears, even if it's, if it's not Ryan Pace, but it's, most likely not going to be. So before we get into my last topic, just want to quickly thank our sponsor, Stupid Car Tray. The holidays are here and what better gift than the perfect car organizer. And you can get two for one, two for the price of one. Select two trays, put them in your cart and use code BOGO me now, B-O-G-O me now to get your free Stupid Car Tray today. Link in the description, code in the description as well. Quickly, just want to go through mine really fast. Starting off, I kind of hit on earlier. Let every wide receiver besides Darnell Mooney go. 
I mean, they're all on their last year of their contract. Do not re-sign anybody. Build a group around your next head coach and your next offensive coordinator. Because if Matt Nagy is not back next year, which I really doubt it, and he's going to build the whole house is going to get cleaned out after this season is kind of like what we're saying. Keep Darnell Mooney, but everyone else is an unrestricted free agent. See you later. Like just get rid of them, rebuild the entire room around those two, uh, the offensive coordinator and the head coach. Second, trade Cleo Mack, Eddie Goldman, and Akeem H- Robert Quinn for a boatload of picks and outside of the NFC or hell, send them to the Lions. Seriously, send them to the Lions. Let the Lions have their one year of fame. And again, the Bears are going to be in a rebuild. So what's the big deal? You know, as much as I hate saying getting rid of those guys, Lions have really good draft capital for next year. Easy, quickly can put them back on the map. And also they can still get some prospects and everything in the next couple of years. So I think that's what the Lions should, I, I think that's what the Bears should do. I, I, you know, if you send them to the Dolphins, great. You know, they get to play for, in Florida for the last couple of years, already looking at retirement homes and everything. So good for them. Uh, and then you can go out and get guys like uh, DeMarvin Lean, defensive tackle out of Texas, or Evan, Evan Neal, offensive tackle out of Alabama with these high picks and start really rebuilding the right way in order for this team to be best successful around Justin Fields. So go young, go cheap, chew cap. I don't care. That's what you have to do. And finally, a trade package with Danny Trevathan and Eddie Jackson. Both of them are still under contract for the next couple of years. And whatever you get, take it. Like just get picks, just get as many picks as possible. That's all I have to say in regards to that. Rebuild this team correctly. And that's what all Chicago Bears fans want. So Tony, any last comments before we close out? No, man, I'm just sad. We suck. I'm sorry to the fans for predicting we <laughs> run this table. That, you know, it was kind of a joke. It was lighthearted. There was a path. We had just won a game, I think. I don't remember exactly what it was. It was the Vegas it. game. Yeah, we had just won. I was, I was excited and I apologize. I will never pick them to win again. I guarantee you that because we'll all just get our heart broken continuously. Well, yeah, Tony's the curse. So now he's saying he's going to lose every game. So hopefully that reverses everything. So yep. <laughs> with that, thank you very much for joining this episode of Just Another Year Chicago. My name is Dick Brody. Join alongside Tony Cepedo, and we'll see you guys next time.